It is springtime here in Canada and that means it is sugar season. And so we are today going to be making sugar for the year. I'm going to be trying to make a year supply this year. We'll see if I'm able to make that much. But this is what's left from last year. It's not very much left. But this is maple sugar. So it is like the texture of white sugar. I use it in recipes one to one with white sugar and brown sugar. It's a little bit somewhere in between the two, I would say, between a white sugar and a brown sugar. But at most recipes, I just substitute it right in, and it works great. It has a beautiful maple smell to it, and in sugar cookies, if you use it straight one-to-one, -one, I find it tastes like a maple sugar cookie, which is delicious. We love the maple flavor. I do use maple syrup for baking sometimes, and this is our syrup from last year. We have quite a bit left over, and so this is what I'll be making into our sugar. And syrup is great for cooking with, but sometimes it can be a little bit difficult to convert into recipes that are calling for granulated sugar since it's a liquid and it doesn't really replace one-to-one -one always. So I find it a lot easier to take last year's syrup and turn it into sugar. And this will last me for at least a year. I'm sure it would last more. This was made last spring, so this is a year old, and it's still completely fine. It can go a little bit hard, but just like brown sugar does in the cupboard, it is completely shelf-stable, just like regular sugar. It lasts a long time. And that way we will be able to have our fresh syrup made this year, and we'll use that as our syrup. So that's the plan for today. To make maple sugar, you'll need first maple syrup. That's step one. You don't need to turn it into syrup and bottle it first. We just like to use up our last year's inventory to make this year's sugar. You could just make your maple syrup and go straight into the sugar phase. Or if you don't live in a region that makes maple syrup or you don't have maple trees, you can buy your maple syrup and turn it into sugar. Often maple sugar or maple cream, which is another product, can be quite expensive to buy because it takes more effort to create this product. But for us, we love being able to produce our own sugar. It's another way we can be more self-sufficient on our homestead. Sugar is something that we use a lot of. <laughs> we do a lot of baking. It's in a lot of our cooking. So I love being able to produce this ourselves. So to make our maple sugar, we're going to start with our maple syrup. And we're going to need a big pot. So I use a big stock pot. A uh, metal pot with a heavy base is best so it doesn't scorch your syrup. And if you could even have a taller pot, that's better. I never fill my pot with syrup more than halfway because as you bring the temperature of the syrup higher, it'll start to foam and boil. And for the amount of syrup I have here today, I'm going to probably do multiple batches. It won't all fit in this pot. So as we're boiling, we'll need to have our thermometer so that we can check our temperature. You can use different types of thermometers. Obviously, a candy thermometer is best. We've had multiple different candy thermometers in the past, and I find it they're finicky. I've had some that work good. We have one that we used to use for actually down the sugar shed and that's our when we got like our go-to one. But I've purchased candy thermometers just at the store and a couple times they didn't work right. Like they didn't read the right temperature and it made my batch mess up. So this one I've used a lot. It's a meat thermometer but I find it works good. It's a little bit difficult because your hand gets quite hot so I just put it in, take it out, put it in and it's a little bit melted <laughs> because it's a little too hot so it's not ideal but it's going to work for me today and I've used this for a few years. The one I like the best is a probe and then I have it on the side. I can read the temperature, the digital thermometer, but I just can leave the probe in the pot. However, we were moving this year and I can't find it. So when we unpack in our cabin, then I'll hopefully find it. So if you've been following along with our channel, you know that we're building an off-grid cabin in the woods, but it's not done yet. So currently I'm not making the sugar in our cabin because there's no kitchen yet. Hopefully next year I will be. <laughs> but this year I'm in my parents' kitchen and I'm thankful they're letting me make my sugar here. So I've just added a little over three liters of syrup into the pot. It's just about a little under halfway up and I, if I had a bigger pot, I'd add more, but it's a pretty short pot and so I don't want it to boil over. And to help prevent that, I'm just gonna add a little bit of butter around the rim. When it hits the butter, it'll go back down. So the taller the pot, the better really. And that way you'll have more room for it to foam up 
and it won't go over the sides. As it gets boiling, I can also put a wooden spoon across the top and that'll help it not to foam up, but the butter should do the trick. So now we're gonna turn the heat on to a medium high, get it boiling. We don't want it to scorch the bottom um, and we don't want it to boil over, but you want it to get a nice boil because you need to evaporate. So I'm also gonna turn my hood vent on, which will probably be a little bit loud, but if you don't, it'll steam up your kitchen quite a bit. So it's good to either have it by an open window or uh, your hood vent on. Once it gets boiling, I'll show you what it looks like and we're going to be waiting for it to get to 262 degrees Fahrenheit. As it's boiling, usually when you're making anything sugar related, you don't want to stir it because if you interrupt it, it's going to crystallize. But since the point of doing this is to make crystallized sugar, it doesn't really matter. So if you feel like it's going to boil over and you need to give it a stir to get the foam down, you can do that. When you're making maple cream, however, do, never do that. It'll ruin it, speaking from experience. <laughs> so we're going to let it get boiling. This will probably take a few, 20, 30 minutes to get it to the right temperature, depending on how thick your syrup was to begin with. Sometimes people bring their syrup not as high initially, and so you have a runnier syrup, or if your syrup's really thick, it might get there a little faster. Since the point is you're boiling off the extra water, which allows the sugar left over to get hotter since boiling water will evaporate at a certain temperature, we can have to get enough water off so the sugar can get hot enough, the water's gone, and you can turn it into crystallized sugar. So that's what we're gonna do. So we just got to 262 degrees Fahrenheit. Now I'm going to use the beaters to mix it until it turns into sugar. Very carefully because this is super hot and I really don't want to splash myself. That would be extremely painful. I have so much that it started to burn out my beaters. I've done this before where I don't do quite as much because this had like over three liters of syrup to start with, so it's a lot in the pot. But if you were doing a smaller batch, the beaters should do fine, but I didn't want to burn them out. And so I will finish with the beaters once it gets closer to the sugar stage, but for now, I just have to keep moving it around, not stop stirring or it might turn hard and clumpy. So I gotta keep it moving, getting an arm workout as I go. And as I keep going, it keeps getting stiffer and more crumbly. And eventually this is gonna turn to sugar. <laughs> but right now it just looks like a big sticky pot. It's getting there, just take a long time. done for the mixing part it still is not it's hot and so it needs to completely dry so if not you're gonna end up with one big clump so what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna set these aside and I'm going to still be careful because the pot is still hot but I'm going to sift the sugar through a metal sieve onto a cookie sheet and then I'll leave it out to cool. So I'm gonna see how this goes. And there we have our sugar. And you can see there's some big clumps left over. Sometimes you can kind of just stir them a little bit and they'll declump. And the ones that are left is the, we'll put through the food processor. It's still warm, but I can touch it and it's not that big a deal. The better that you mix it in the pot, the less clumps you're gonna have in the end. Okay, I think that's good. I'm gonna test out this funny 
looking little food processor thing. It, does, it doesn't take any power. So I'm going to try it out and see if it works. If not, I'll switch to a regular one. So I'll put the little lumps in there. And then do some more. Right now it has the texture of brown sugar. But I find as it dries, it gets more of a white sugar texture. Even though the color is this color, the color will depend on the syrup you use. So I use a mix of a whole season worth of syrup. So syrup starts off light, like this one's pretty light. And then as the season goes on, this is like a mid-season. And then I think the darkest stuff was already in here. And so your resulting sugar will be a darker color if your syrup is the end of the season and it's a darker syrup. So now I have three trays of sugar and it's a little bit warm still but it's nice and powdery and so I'm going to let this completely cool before I put it into a jar and see how much I get. I'm hoping for a little bit more than the syrup that I put in so usually you get more sugar as a result in volume than you did have a syrup. Also you get left with all the little crumbly bits. And so this is a that hand pull blender and it didn't really work so well. So I'm going to put these in my electric food processor and blend them up. Alternatively, you could keep these as pebbles and just put them in a jar and they could be used like a sugar cube in tea and coffee and things like that. But I think I'll blitz them up and make them into granulated sugar. You're also going to be left with some really sticky pots when you're done. So something you can do with just your utensils, you just stick them in water, hot water, it'll dissolve. But with your pot, an option you can do is you can put just like an inch or two of water in the bottom and put your lid on and put it down low on the stove and the water will start to evaporate and the steam will cause all of the hard sugar to melt off the side of the pot. And then that's gonna leave you with like a syrup on the bottom and you could use that as a flavor for teas and coffees or you could boil it down longer and it'll give you back maple syrup. So. That's an option, or if you're tired of doing your work, you could just rinse it out, but I think I'll do the water on the stove just so I don't lose all the sugar that's left in the pot. While we're waiting for the sugar to cool and be able to put it in a jar and see how much we get, I thought I'd take it down to the sugar shack to see how Eric is doing making our maple syrup for this year, and that's the whole beginning step of this whole process, so let's go check it out. Smells good. <laughs> the deck's a little precarious. Deck needs to be replaced. Do you have all the sap in the. Not quite. There's a little bit more to add? Yeah. It's gonna be a late night. Yeah, <laughs> be a late night. It's nice that you get your light over the bathroom. Yeah, I mean, no, no, no. That looks like a good idea. So this is our evaporator and Eric's been down here all day adding sap in and letting it boil. We've made a few videos on our setup before. So this is the setup we've had a couple years ago. Last year we were at a different place but we've still been using this pan for a few years and we really, really like it. So this year has been a very, very strange year for making maple syrup. Uh, at the end of February and beginning of March we had literally no snow here in uh, Atlantic Canada and I tapped for the first time at the f like second day of March where usually we're tapping like ninth, tenth day of March so it's a very very strange year and we had a lot of warm weather early on but now it's gotten cold again so it might be either a really quick season or a really long season it all depends but I've never seen anything like it. Did the trees run today? Uh, the trees ran a little bit today, but uh, not very much. It was just a little too cold. So this is like 
a week's worth of syrup? Or yeah, sap? so I tapped last Saturday and now I'm boiling on the following Saturday, so a week's worth of sap. But like Maggie said, we've done several videos on our maple syrup setup. And uh, we bought this pan a few years ago. A uh, neighbor and me, we built a firebox out of an old uh, oil drum. And then we uh, moved it with us. We brought it back to the shack and it is here to stay because I'm sick and tired of moving this thing and leveling it every year. And we like the setup. It was relatively inexpensive and it works. We add uh, the cold sap in the warming tray, uh, let it heat up on the back of the evaporator. And then over here we have a ball valve that we can open up let the sap drip in like so and I got an old piece of t-shirt there to filter it and then it'll put the cooler sap in this side and then it moves as it gets closer to being maple syrup and then this side here we got the dial thermometer over here we can check our temperature and a lot of the times you can rely on temperature but also the way the syrup looks as it gets close to being done the bubbles get really tight and close together and it'll get really really dark and so that's almost as much of an indicator as temperature so we bring the syrup on the pan here to about 212, 215, and then we take it off and we finish it inside, similar to what I, we were doing up at the house to make the sugar. Instead of bringing it for the sugar, we take it all the way to 262, which is crazy hot, but for syrup, we bring it to 219. And that depends on your location, where what it's going to be, but we just ask friends of ours that have been doing it for, their family's probably doing it for hundreds of years in this area, and they told us that number and it's worked for us really well but as it gets denser it moves through here so it's based off density I've had a few questions about our evaporator pan because it's kind of, it's not the fact that it's on a slope it's the fact that the sap has a lower density than the syrup so as the water evaporates off the syrup gets heavier and when you put sap in it pushes that heavier syrup down through and that's why the densest stuff is right here because of the way the chambers are built. So the whole thing's level, but it the weight of the syrup after it's been evaporated is what causes it to move through the system. And holy crap, it's hot over here. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, it's hot in here. It's nice. You think you'll be here late tonight? Yeah. You need to put like a little cot or something yeah, in here. Just sleep there. A little a hammock or something? Thanks for showing us the setup. Yep. I'm going to head back up and okay. finish my sugar. Yeah, I'm going to go finish my supper. Okay, see ya. Bye. Thank you. So this is one of our biggest trees we tap and as you can see inside the bucket it's iced and so the surface kind of frozen up but this will thaw out and when it gets sunny it's almost dark now so it's getting cold and it was a pretty cold day today so Eric will probably just leave these the trees won't run and then on the next nice day he'll come and dump them all out once it's thawed because when it's frozen it's hard to put into other jugs to carry it up to the shack. So this is a sugar maple tree and we have a few red maples tapped but the majority of our trees are sugar maple and the only difference really is we find is that the sugar maples give you more sugar in the sap so you will have to boil less than if you had a lot of red maple because they just have a lower sugar content meaning there's more water in the sap so you have to boil it longer to get down to syrup so that's the difference but let's head back home and see how our sugars turned out So the sugar is now dry and I'm going to be storing it in this jug. It's 128 ounce fluid ounces. So we'll see how much it is. I can weigh it at the end and see how much weight we have of sugar. But one thing I noticed compared to this time versus last time, there's a color difference. It's a lot darker and that's probably because of the type of syrup I use. But also this sugar I had last time is a lot more like white sugar. It's like sandy. It doesn't clump. Whereas the stuff I noticed I made today, it's also very like granular, but if I squeeze it really hard, it'll clump like brown sugar. So I would say it's not quite as like soft as brown sugar. It's a little bit more like white sugar, but not quite as much like white sugar as my last batch. So I'm thinking that maybe it has to do with what temperature I took it to, since that would mean more water has evaporated, that maybe I took this one a little farther and therefore I had less 
water left in it when I made it into granule sugar. So that's my guess. If anyone has any ideas, let me know in the comments. But it's nice and cool now, and so I'll be good to store it. So I'm going to put it in my jug, and we'll see how much we get. So this is our final result for the sugar for this first batch. So we put three liters, or a little bit more, three liters of syrup in. And this jar holds um, 128 ounces, which is a little under four liters. So it's like three and three quarters. So we got a little bit more volume than we put in. And then I still have the little bits to blitz up and add a top up. So probably I'll end up with almost close to four liters. But you don't usually measure white sugar in liters. So I thought I'd weigh it and see. So before this weighed, I think it was two pounds, the jar. So we'll put it on and see. This is six pounds, so this would be four pounds of sugar. I'm happy with how much this produced, and I think the result's really nice. I like that it's in between a brown and white sugar, so I can kind of go and use it for both ways in recipes. And I'll be doing up the rest of our syrup. I have this and some more. And so I should end up with about three times this amount of sugar. And between that sugar and then the syrup we produce this year, it should be close to the right amount of sugar we need for all of baking and stuff for the year. So we'll see if this is enough for us and hopefully we won't have to buy any and that would be really exciting. We would be producing another staple in our pantry, which is so exciting. I love that about homesteading. Thank you so much for watching. If you're interested in more of our maple syrup videos, I'll leave them linked below. And if you're interested in seeing our cabin come together, hopefully next year we'll be in the cabin and I'll be doing this again next year, but down there. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great day and I'll see you on the next one. Oh, how's it taste? I should do that. I'll try it and see. Mmm, tastes delicious. Extremely strong maple flavor in these little chunks. Mmm. If I start, I'm not gonna stop. Really good.